Who do you want to do business with? Where do they live? Do they live in Paris or Parramatta? Do they live in Queensland or Queenstown? Uh, how much money do they have? Do they want to buy your product or service? More importantly, that's all about your customers and clients, but what about you? And isn't the most important reason to go into business, and I've always asked these questions, do you want to be your own boss? Do you want to choose your own hours? Do you want to choose how much money you earn? How profitable you are? Do you want to choose when you go on holidays uh, at a time that suits you rather than when everybody else is on holidays? And do you want to do business with the people that you are excited to do business with? Do you want to have customers and clients that you really like? And if you've ever had the reverse, where you've had a, a boss that you didn't like, you've had a product or a service that you weren't proud of, you had to go to work at a time that didn't suit you, so you had to get up too early or go to bed too late or uh, you just didn't like the hours that you were working, they didn't suit you. Uh, you might have been unhappy with the amount of money that you were earning and you might have had customers and clients that you didn't like. And how was that? So what a great reason to go into business. And I always, I get excited about this. Choose your own hours, be your own boss, earn the amount of money that you want to earn, go on holidays when it suits you and work with the people that you want to work with. That's your target market. Now, you'll often hear that as a business catchphrase, like, who's your target market? But ultimately, the question is, who do you want to invest time with? Who, uh, who are the people that are going to annoy you or frustrate you or you just don't want to have in your life? And who are the people that are going to add value to your life? So that when you wake up every day, and I always ask this question, you know when you flutter, your eyes flutter open in the morning, so you, you're asleep and your eyes flutter open, you go, where am I? What am I doing today? Where am I going? What is my plans for today? And it's that kind of the the first part of the day. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could wake up and say, I'm going to do something that I love today with the people that I love to do it with and I'm gonna be profitable. I'm gonna be living a life where I can make the amount of money that gives me the lifestyle that I wanna have. So how do we make that happen? And it's a simple step-by-step -step process which a lot of people that go into business, when I ask them, uh, I'll rephrase, if they come to me and say, well, we're not doing very well, can you please help? When I ask these series of questions, it's something that they haven't thought of or they just have never done. So let's have a look at, if you're about to start your business, what do you need to do? What questions do you need to ask about choosing your own hours and being your own boss and working with the people that you wanna work with? And if you have already got a business and it's either not as profitable as you would like it to be, or you don't like your customers and clients, or you feel like your business is in control of your life and you're not working the hours that you want to work, what do you need to do to make sure that you can sort all of that out? Because when you go to bed at night, wouldn't it be nice to say, wow, I've had an awesome day. And when you wake up in the morning, wouldn't it be awesome to say, I can't wait for my day today because I'm doing what I absolutely love to do. So let's work, uh, work those through. And they're very simple questions. Number one, ultimately, is if you're not earning any money, you can't have a business. If you're not earning any money, then you can't do the things that the Western world requires. So uh, to have a house, to have a car, to be able to travel, to wear clothes, to eat food, to go to school, to all the, the things that we invest money in or we have to spend money on, uh, now your business is gonna be providing you with that. So you have to work out exactly that amount of money. And I always ask this question, could it be two amounts? Originally, it's the amount that you need to get out of your lousy, stinking, rotten job so you can now have your own business. And then the second amount is the amount of money that you really would have a life of freedom. So that uh, a price tag's not controlling your life, your boss is not controlling your life, your customers and clients aren't controlling your life. You have the cash flow, you have the profit, you have the money in your bank account that gives you the freedom of lifestyle that you wanna have. So you need to work those numbers out. And it's not just a random, oh, I think I need $100,000 a year, or I think I need $80,000 a year, or I think I need $2 million a year. Literally work through the process because it's kind of fun. What kind of house do you want to live in? What kind of car do you want to drive? How do you want to travel? What kind of food do you want to eat? What kind of class, uh, clothes do you want to wear? Uh, what kind of schools do you want your kids to go to? How much money do you want to give to charity every year? And work out those numbers. And when you've got that amount, uh, it's a, it's a, it could be a round figure. It might be I need to earn $100,000 a year, but it might be 120. dollars and I'll just use that example. If you need to earn 120 and you're only earning 100, what's gonna happen? Either your business will go broke or you won't be able to keep doing what you love to do. So this is a pretty important number. So how much money do you want to earn? More importantly, profit. 
So yes, we've got to have cash flow through the business. So that's the second number, which is what is the expenses going to be to run the business? So whether it's an online business or a face-to-face -face business, or you're going to have a gym, or you're going to have an office or a medical practice, or you're going to have a law, a law office, whatever it is that you're going to do, what are the expenses to run that business? Do you need to employ people? What are your insurances going to be? What's it going to be to turn the lights on? How much is electricity going to be? Every single expense has to be covered by the income that you bring into the business. So now the simple process is how much do you want to earn? How much do you want to profit? How much money do you want to put in your bank account at the end of the week, the month or the year? Add that to your expenses. So now you've got a total amount. Now it's how many hours do you want to work? And I think this is probably the most important question. Uh, yes, you need money to operate your business, but don't you want to be able to choose your own hours? A lot of people will share with you in business that they're stressed and they're frazzled and they don't have enough time for their family and they don't have enough time to be healthy, fit and strong and they're blaming their business for being out of shape and, and not connecting with their family because they didn't do this question at the beginning. So what you do is, there's 168 hours in the week, we all have that. How many of those hours do you want to invest into your business? So you sit down with your 168, or you might sit down with 12 months, or you might sit down with 365 days and work out exactly the amount of time that you will have to invest into your business, invest into your business. So it's not, oh, I'm gonna work 40 hours. What do you want to work? What is the amount of time that you want to invest into your business? Now, there are some business people who 40 hours for them is half a week or a quarter of a week. They're investing 100, 120 hours into their business and they love it. They wouldn't do anything else. It's like a kid that's out playing or you're on holidays and you're experiencing wow things in the world. You're really happy to invest 12 hours a day, 15 hours a day, 20 hours a day even because you're only sleeping four hours because you're loving what you're doing. So that's one of the interesting things. There are a lot of people in business and you go, I don't want to have a life like they've got because they work 16 hours a day. But the question is this, are they working or are they playing? Are they loving what they're doing or are they frustrated because they're, they're stressed and I wish I could be with my family? Big questions to ask. The reverse of that is if you uh, only want to work four hours a day or two hours a day, or work one day, have the next day off, work one week, have the next week off, or work in the morning, not in the afternoon. They're the choices that you have when you've got your own business. Remember, be your own boss, choose your own hours, work out how much money you want to earn. Now, the reason this is so important, because today we're talking about target marketing. Those three things tell you automatically who predominantly who your target market's gonna be. So when you're gonna be operating, how much money you need to charge will give you two very distinct target markets and where you're gonna operate from. So there's a great question, am I gonna be online? Am I gonna have an office? Am I going to have a combination of online and a studio? Am I going to have a shop? Am I going to have a cafe? Uh, those are the things that may, will make up the expenses of your business. So you work out how much money you need to earn, what your expenses are, and how many hours you want to invest into your business. And that will automatically tell you how much you need to charge your clients which will give you a target market. And of course, there are people in the world, and we'll just, I'm an exercise professional, so I'm always going to use that as an example. There are some people that will never want an exercise professional, never. So why would I talk to those people? My marketing will never aim to attract people that are not interested in having an exercise professional in their life. There are some people that are very happy to invest in an exercise professional, but they've got a limited budget. So it might be that they have $20 a week or $40 a week or $100 a week, but that has to be worked out with your client, obviously. Uh, but you've got to work out what who you're going to be talking to so that when you're marketing, people will look at what you're saying, read what you're saying, watch what you're saying, and they go, oh my God, that's me. She's talking to me. I want to do business with her. I want to be involved with her. I want her to be my personal exercise coach. But if you don't know who that is, who that target market is, then you'll just be spreading information out into the world, throwing stuff out there on, on social media, or you'll put stuff on a, on a brochure, or you'll do a mail out, or you'll do any form of marketing, but you won't be talking to the right people because the right person for you is the person that can afford your product or service, which is why you've got to have a price point. They want to do business at the time that you're going to do business, and they're going to be in your area and or they're going to be online, which means you could 
be in Paris or Parramatta, you could be in Queensland or Queenstown, it doesn't matter because you've got an online business. So there's some really important things to consider because that will be your target market. So if you then have a price point, the question is to ask, do I want to specifically target market people that have that amount of money? Uh, it could be a, a group of people, and I'll go a one step further because there is a very important question to be asked here, who do you want to do business with? And you might work out that you need to have uh, customers and clients that can afford uh, $100, and we'll just use that as a round figure, and they have to be able to do business with you after four o'clock in the afternoon, and they have to live in Paris. So there's a very distinct target market of who to talk to. But the next question is, who do you want to hang out with? Who do you want to invest time with? Who is important to have in your life versus who do you not want to have in your life? And have you ever heard uh, business people say this? Oh, if it wasn't for the customers, this would be a great business. If it wasn't for these horrible clients, I'd love my business. I've heard gym owners and, and personal training studio managers say this to me. If it wasn't for these bloody members, this would be, this would be a great business. Uh, that's no fun, is it? To in, to, you want to be investing time with great people, not wasting time on people that you don't even like. So there's a great question. Is it going to be wealthy people? Is it going to be people who don't have any money? Is it going to be old people, young people? Is it going to be uh, males or females? Is it going to be elite athletes? Is it going to be business people? Is it going to be people who work, uh, blue collar workers or people who work in an office? All very, very important questions because who do you want to invest time with? Now, something that I always share with my exercise professionals, sometimes you don't know that. You think that you might want to be working with this particular uh, person. And I'll give you some great examples. I've got uh, female exercise professionals who said to me, I just want to train women. I'm not interested in training men. I just want to train women. And they've done their target marketing specifically for women. They've attracted women at a certain time frame with a certain dollar uh, value and in a certain area. And they've built up their client base and they've got a successful business. And one day, one of the, the women will say, look, I can't come to my exercise session today. Can I send my husband instead? And what's happened is this exercise professional who's a female, who, who thought she only ever wanted to train females, had such a good time training this, this particular woman's husband that she said, well, do you have any friends that want to come? And it wasn't long before that whole target market changed over. Uh, there was some interesting challenges with training women, as she passionately shared with me. Uh, is it possible that women are uh, that not particularly interested in strength training, so you've got to constantly convince them that it's going to be, be good for them? Uh, women have a lot, seem to be a lot more emotional than men, so they get emotionally attached or unattached to their exercise or their eating. She said, it, this particular student said to me, she just loved training blokes because they came in, worked hard, lifted heavy and, and, and left, and there was no emotional attachment. So she didn't know that until she started training men. So you might think you've got a very particular target market, but until you start exercising with people and still you start, until you start doing business with people, you might not know that. Uh, if I use lawyers, for example, there's a lot of people that go to law school and they really think that they want to be a prosecutor. They want to catch the criminals and they really want to make sure that the bad guys go to jail. Uh, and then they see some innocent people go to jail and it, it doesn't work well with them. So then they become a defense lawyer. Uh, it, they thought it was prosecution, but they changed their mind. Uh, you need to, to work out who's gonna be the people that you wanna hang out with, and it might be that you've gotta start your business and work out for yourself. The big ones though is that you make, you've gotta make sure that you've got people in your target market who can afford your product or service, and you've gotta make sure that the people in your target market will do business at the time that you wanna do business. So that's the, the thing. Pull out your 168 hours of time and you block out all the, all the hours that you're not available to do business. This is a really important project. So it might be that you pull out 365 days and say, look, I'm not available this day, this day, this day, these two weeks, these five weeks, these four weeks might be that you want a uh, holiday nine weeks of the year or 15 weeks of the year. But you've got to block out all the times that you're not available to do business. And the reason for that is, again, if you go into business, isn't it because you want to hang out with the people that you really like at a time that suits your lifestyle? So if, you, if you're available any of the time, and this is the, one of the big challenges again with exercise professionals, and this has happened many, many times to people who have been so excited about becoming personal exercise coaches and, and exercise professionals, but they haven't uh, budgeted their time effectively. So they end up 
training somebody at five o'clock in the morning, somebody at nine o'clock in the morning, somebody at lunchtime, somebody at four o'clock in the afternoon, somebody at nine o'clock at night. So they feel like they're working from five o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock at night, but they've only had four or five clients and they get burnt out and they get tired and they get frustrated and they get angry and they end up not being an exercise professional. They go back to some lousy, stinking, rotten job, but at least it's only eight hours. That happens because you didn't time, uh, time budget effectively. So when you've worked out, this is exactly when I want to do business, that then becomes your target market. So for example, if you want to, uh, you love getting up early, so you're really happy to train people from five o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock in the morning, which gives you five hours every day. And then for the rest of the day, you want to invest with your family or your partner or your kids or yourself. So you are only available, you, you would be the person who, who does business, the person who specializes in people who want your product or service between five o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock in the morning, that's all. That's really easy because now when somebody reads your marketing, they say, oh my God, that's me. That's when I want to do business at five o'clock in the morning. And I'll give you some cool examples again from the exercise profession, uh, pilots, uh, people who work at a 24-hour casino, nurses and doctors who work in a hospital, people in hospitality. Uh, these are people that work really odd hours. They're not nine to fivers. Uh, they're the people that, the reason why 24-hour gyms are so successful, for example, because you can go to the 24-hour gym at three o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning or midnight. Well, you might become the exercise professional who specializes in people who like to exercise between midnight and five o'clock in the morning. That's a very specific target market. So when somebody reads your marketing, they'd say, oh my God, that's me. Rowie can train me between midnight and five o'clock in the morning because that's when I go to the gym. That's just one of those examples. Can you see then that that would link into your unique selling point? So not only do you specialize in people that train at that time, exercise at that time, want to do business at that time, but you're the only person who does business at that time. I use another really fun example, Christmas, Easter, Boxing Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, uh, all of the public holidays. Uh, one of the things that made me very successful as a gym manager and also as a personal exercise coach is I specialized in public holidays. Because guess who isn't working on a public holiday? The other gym instructors, the other personal trainers, the other exercise professionals, and the other gyms. Most, when I was managing gyms, there were no 24 hour gyms back then, by the way. People said that was impossible, it was never gonna happen. Isn't that funny? Uh, but they just, if, you, if, you, if it was Christmas day, most gyms were closed. But me, I was very happy to be at my health club on Christmas day, because I, I loved being in my business. So people knew that even if it was Christmas Day, they could still come to the gym or they could still come to their personal coaching session. Interestingly, I also got lots of new members that was part of my marketing plan because the people that couldn't go to their gym on Christmas Day or Boxing Day or Easter or any of the public holidays, uh, they would come to my gym because my gym was open, which means I gave them a wow experience, which means I got new members. That's called a USP combined with a specialization. We specialize in public holidays. Now, if you're a builder, if you're a, uh, a car dealer, if you're a white goods uh, seller, all the things that people think they can't do business on a public holiday, uh, but they're the kinds of things that people have got time. So people have got time on their birthday, on a public holiday, on a long weekend to go look at cars, to look at white goods, to uh, to look at building. Uh, wouldn't it be nice, and I'll give you a classic example, most builders, in fact, any builder that I've ever been involved with, except for my own father who was a builder, and this is one of the reasons, again, why he was so successful, is they finish, finish work usually, they start at seven, finish at three, or start at eight, finish at four, uh, and they never work on the weekends, and they always have perhaps a month off over Christmas. So, you know, anything between the 24th of December and maybe mid-January or longer. Lawyers and, and doctors and, and medical professionals are usually the same. You cannot find anywhere on the planet a lawyer or a doctor or a builder or some kind of architect or engineer who are available between Christmas, New Year, and probably till the end of January. January. But that might be the only months that you work. You might decide that the only time you're going to do business is between, might be November and March. 
Uh, and that's who you specialize in. You then become the person who builds houses, does legal work, does medical operations when everybody else is not available. So it gives you USP. And it means that you can go on holidays when everybody else is at work because that's usually the time of the year when everything's the most expensive, that there's the least seats on planes, it's the hardest to get around the world because everybody else is holidaying between November and, and the end of January. But that's when you do business and then you can holiday for the rest of the year. So I'm just using those as an example. It's in business, the beautiful thing is you can either think outside the box or you could create a new box. Just live your life the way you want to live it, not have somebody tell you how to live your life, including your clients, your customers, your members, the people that are buying your product or service. And that's one of the challenges, as I shared before, with exercise professionals. Often they get burnt out and tired and annoyed and frustrated with their own clients because they haven't time budgeted effectively. If you only want to exercise with people between 5 o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock in the morning, and any time after 10 o'clock is your time to be with you, with you, with your family, with your friends, with your children, if somebody then wants to train with you at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and you say, oh yeah, okay, you can come and train with me at 4 o'clock, you end up resenting that person because they're taking time time away from you. Isn't that the reason you go into business? So you can choose your own hours. So another great example of that, and I'll use the medical profession as a, as a beautiful example when you talk about specialists. If you want to go and see a top specialist, so a gynecologist or an orthopedic surgeon or a plastic surgeon, uh, any of the really expensive specialists, when you call their office and try to make an appointment, they will probably tell you that this is the exact time. We've got one appoint appointment available in three weeks time or three months time for a lot of top medical professionals. And you have to come at 20 past 11 in three months time. And if you really want to see that specialist, if that that's, you know that that's the best person to look after you, then you will move your life around to make sure that you can fit into their schedule. Now that's the important thing about business. Uh, What's your schedule? And don't put people outside of that schedule and make it really important to you and to your client. Uh, another really uh, special target market uh, program that I've seen is my beautician. Uh, I can't go and see my beautician. Uh, I can't just drop in there. And I definitely can't call her to make an appointment and I can't send her a text message to make an appointment. I have to go to her booking system. And I have to, she puts up all her availabilities when she's available, not when I want to go, when she's available. So then I choose one of those bookings. And that's a beautiful way to do business. You tell your customers and clients when you're available and they choose to come when you are available. And or you might say, I have 17 spots available, which one do you want? Or I have three spots available, which one would suit you best? As an exercise professional, I always do this. Uh, I've got, these are the seven spots I've got available. Uh, which one of these would be the very best one for you so you'll never miss a session? Because uh, particularly as an exercise professional, and personal trainers tell me this all the time, well, my clients always cancel. Well, there's, there's probably four reasons why people cancel. Number one is something came up, an emergency came up, and there's nothing you can do about that. So with my beautician, if an emergency happens, uh, and I don't give 24 hours notice, I just lose my booking and I lose my money. That's just the, the risk of doing business with my excellent beautician. And I have no challenge with that because she's so good at what she does that even if an emergency happens and I miss out, I've already paid for my session because I go online, book my session and pay for it. If I don't cancel within 24 hours uh, of not being able to go, I just lose my money. If I do cancel within 24 hours, Oh, sorry, uh, so right up until 24 hours, I can change my appointment to another time. I can never get my money back. And that's just the beautiful thing about doing business with somebody who's really good at what they do. So number one is something comes up. Number two is something planned is going to happen. So what a great thing to do is sit down with your customers and clients if you're, if you're making a service booking for them and say, do you have it between now and, and when we're going to, or all of the times that we're going to be doing business this year, and I'll use exercise professionals, you've told me that you want to achieve this goal by this day, date and time. That gives us 17 sessions between now and then. Out of those 17 sessions, you've picked that magical day Monday at seven o'clock is the best time for you to exercise with me. 
how many of those magical day Mondays will you, can we actually confirm today? Or do you have a holiday? Do you have a business meeting? Do you have kids doing a concert at school? Let's work out when you won't be able to come so that we can move around that. And that's, again, a target market where you are so good at what you do that people are prepared to move their life around to fit in with you. It's like going to that medical professional. If they give you a, a date and a time in three months' time, if you don't show up, you might have to wait another three months. And because they're really good at what they do, you want to keep that appointment. And that's probably a headspace to keep in mind. People that take advantage of you, people that cancel at the last minute, people that want to uh, want a discount or argue with you about price, they might not be in your target market. Wouldn't it be nice to do business with people that, like me with my beautician, I go and see her. The very first thing I do when I come home is rebook that session. So I, I get straight onto, onto her website. I pay for my next appointment, which is usually in two or three or four weeks' time. She's already got the money in the bank. When I go and see her, we never have to talk about money. We never have. She never has to ask me for money. She never has to hassle me if I cancel my appointment because it's all done on computer. Uh, I'm a very particular target market, of course, because I want a great beautician. So whatever business you're in, if you're going to be the best at what you do, set yourself up with that perception. Get people to book into the time slots that you've made available. They're only going to come and do business with you uh, because they've got the money to pay for your services. So it's not like I can say to my beautician, well, I don't really want to pay that this week. Can, I, can you give me a discount or I want to pay next week? No, nope. it's this much at this time. And if you don't cancel within 24 hours, you lose your money. That's the conditions of doing business with somebody that's really good. If you make an appointment with a gynecologist or a psychologist or an orthopedic surgeon or a cardiologist, this is when you have to come and this is how much it costs. And if you don't like it, go somewhere else. Very specific target market. So cancellations happen from uh, something comes up, something is definitely going to come up. So let's book that and take that into account in, in advance. The third one is something I always call the, uh, I call it the, the Paris experience. <laughs> Very important. Sometimes life just says, throws beautiful things at us. So uh, a, a beautiful person comes into your life and says, I'm, I've just bought you a ticket to Paris, we're leaving tomorrow, which means you couldn't go to your petition or you couldn't go to the gynecologist or you couldn't go to the orthopedic surgeon or the lawyer. Uh, and there's, you need to be aware that that's going to happen in, in life. Something's going to come up that's really important and really special. The person still wants to come and do business with you. They just It's just not it's not going to happen this particular time. So you might give people an opportunity to say, okay, out of the, the 12 sessions we've booked or the 34 sessions we've booked together or the, the seven times we're going to do business together, I understand there's going to be a, a couple of times could come up. So we're going to give you two, two sessions of leeway. So something just to keep in mind, again, it's a different, different headspace. It makes what you do really important, but it also gives a, a beautiful customer service experience to your customers and clients. The last reason that people cancel, which nobody wants to understand or know about, is if you're doing a terrible job, if you're crappy at what you do. If you're not good at what you do, if you've uh, upset people or hurt people or annoyed them or frustrated them or they're not coming back or they're going to skip a session, uh, be aware of that and take that into account. Probably the other one I missed out on there, so there's probably five, is that sometimes people are just lazy. They don't want to come because they don't feel like it. Uh, and wouldn't you want to take into account that that could happen? But if you're really good at what you do, and I use the medical professionals again, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're lazy and you don't feel like it, it's raining, it's cold. If you know that you have to go to that appointment, otherwise you're not going to get another appointment, are you more likely to go? And that's something to consider. So your target market, the people you want to do business with, they're going to do business in your area. They're going to be able to afford your prices and they're going to be able to do business at the time that you want to do business with them. And then they're the people that you want to do business with. So this is my next really exciting thing to consider. Uh, an acceptance process, an application form. Uh, this is the people that we that we bring into our business. It's really important that we do business with this kind of people. And I've been doing this for a very long time now. I've never wanted people at my health club that were there to show off, for example. So if somebody said, I want to come and join your health club, we would have a conversation about why they were coming, what goals they wanted to achieve, when they wanted to achieve them, and the purpose for coming to the health club. And if people were going to come to my health club just to hang out, look in the mirror, pose, uh, 
be a little bit obnoxious or intimidating, that would have affected my other members. So I didn't want people like that in my health club. So there was an application process. It was a, and it was more like, this is what we do here. If this doesn't suit you, these are the other health clubs that I can recommend. Uh, as a personal exercise coach, it was about timing. These are the times that I've got available and these are the people that I wanna do business with. So I'll use this example. What are your goals? How committed are you to those goals? If you are 100% committed, I'm 100% committed and we'll be a great team. But if you're 95% committed, I'm 100% uncommitted. If you're 100% in, I'm 100% in. If you're 95% in, I'm 100% out. Because I had a very, very strict booking sheet. I only had 64 sessions a week. I was managing a health club and I was teaching 15 exercise classes every week. So I only had 64 sessions of personal exercise coaching available. So when one of those spots became available, I only wanted to give that spot to somebody that was not going to cancel, that was serious about their exercise, that actually wanted to get results or, or they were really serious about coming to every single session. So that was a really important question for me. Now, it might not work for your business, but consider who do you want to do business with? Because again, I've heard too many times people share with me, oh, it'd be a great business if it wasn't for the customers. Well, that's no fun, is it? It's no way to do business. So on a day-to-day -day basis, if you want to hang out with the right kind of people for you that are going to add value to your life and vice versa, because there's something really special about having customers and clients or members that you're adding value to their life. Uh, if, if somebody's just coming, and I'll use the gym, if somebody's just coming to the gym to show off, pose in front of the mirror and talk to their friends, uh, there could be a different gym for them. For me, that was I didn't want those people in my health club. I wanted people in my health club who were excited about exercise. They wanted to get results. They wanted to add value to the other people at the health club. And they were, they were that, if you're 100% in, I'm 100% in. If you're 95% in, I'm 100% out. Uh, and it means that you get to choose the people that you invest time with. Uh, that we've taken that, of course, into the Max International Colleges. We have a very strict application process to be a student at Max. There are lots of cheap courses. There are lots of easy ways to get a qualification. There are lots of exercise people who are not interested in being educated. They just want to get a bit of paper. And that I, I invest personal time with all of my students. I don't want to invest time with people that aren't really genuinely interested in learning, in continual learning, in wanting to help their clients achieve their goals, safe exercise, exercise that works, healthy eating plans, uh, creating healthy eating and exercise plans, customized and personalized for your actual client. So one of the really important things to me when people come and say, look, I would like to be an exercise professional, I'd like to be a business professional, please can I study at Max? Or I'm looking around for the best place for me to study. For me, it's about you and I are gonna be on, on the same team. We're gonna be investing time together to make sure that you achieve your goal. If you're 100% in, I'm 100% in. If you're 95% in, we're 100% out. There's only three coaches on this Max team and we've got to invest time with people who are really committed to their career or to learning or both. So whatever business you're in, I'll go through the process again. How much do you need to earn? How many hours do you want to invest? Where do you want to do business? Is it going to be online? Is it going to be in a, in a, in a, uh, biz, uh, sorry, in a suburb, in a city, in a country? Because you have to attract people who are going to be in your local area. Uh, if you're online, of course, you can attract people from all over the world, and it's a different headspace, of course. So how much do you want to earn? What are your expenses? Uh, how much time do you want to invest into your business, and who do you want to invest time with? And that will tell you your target market. Now, that may uh, go a little further, as I shared before, with I prefer males or females, I prefer young people versus old people. Uh, and that might be exactly your specialization, which will be the last thing to consider. Who do you want to specialize in? So when somebody says to you, what do you do? You can say very beautifully, I'm an exercise professional who specializes in. I'm a lawyer who specializes in. I'm a doctor who specializes in. And doctors are really good at this, aren't they? A general practitioner will tell you that. I'm a general practitioner. Everybody can come to see me. But a specialist has put in extra years of study, extra money, extra passion, extra energy to specialize in something completely different. Not general. This is my, my specialization. 
So when somebody says to you, what do you do? That is your target market. I specialize in people who want to exercise between midnight and five o'clock in the morning. I specialize in women who have had a baby and want to get their body back. I specialize in men who've lost their mojo and they want to find it again. I specialize in people who want to lose weight and never find it again. I specialize in criminal law for people that have never been to jail and never want to go there. I specialize lies in orthopedics. I'm a bone specialist. Whatever business you're in, find the thing that you're the most passionate about. Find the people that you want to invest the most time with. Find it most importantly when you want to do business and of course how much money you want to, want to earn and that will give you exactly the, the ability to wake up every day when your eyes flutter open and you'll be able to say to yourself, today I'm going to hang out with people that I really like at a time that suits me and fits in with my lifestyle and provides me with the income that I want to earn to have the freedom of choice in my life. And isn't that what business is all about? Freedom of choice. Would you like to choose your own hours, be your own boss, go on holidays when it suits you, earn the amount of money that you want to earn and invest time with the people that add the most value to your life and you can add the most value to theirs? Isn't that what business is all about? Yes.